there are many different surgeries that are out there um, that periodontists do and let's look at the main one so the one of the main types of surgeries that periodontists do are is periodontal flap procedure so before I go into the, what a periodontal flap procedure is um, let's look at this picture over here if you were to debride okay an area how deep do you think your instrument can go how deep how many millimeters deep maybe four maybe five but anytime you have a six millimeter pocket it's really hard to get all the calculus from a six millimeter pocket and you can kind of see that here where an individual who is really good at debridement um, managed to debride this tooth and went down up to five millimeters but once you know they reach six seven or eight millimeter it's really really difficult to um, get that area so if you can't if you have a deep pocket and there's calculus there and you can't get to it even if you're using like you know um an after five instrument or an instrument that can go deeper what one of the things that can you can do is you can go see a periodontist and get a flap surgery done and what happens in a flap procedure is they basically cut the gums and then they lift it or just move it away from the teeth and bone and you can see the flap has been raised and now what is exposed now you can see the bone you can see the teeth um, the gums are no longer covering the area so you can actually get in there and start debriding so this is what the flap looks like when it is raised when this comes out um, you can see as you can see you can see the roots you can see the alveolar bone contours and this is termed elevation so anytime the actually i'll show, go to the next time anytime you're separating the gum the epithelium the outside gum uh, and the connective tissue the inside part where the blood supply is from the root and the alveolar bone that is called elevation because you're elevating the tissues now when you elevate so when you do this and you do what you have to do, you contour the bone and you debride the area. When I say contour, I mean you smoothen it out. Any defects, you smoothen it out. Then you can put the gums either back in its original place or sometimes what they do is they'll pick the gum and they'll put it at a different location, lower down. And the reason why they do it lower down, and I'll show you pictures of that as we look, is because the pockets were too big they were a six or seven millimeter pocket and now you want to put it lower so now it's only a three or a four millimeter pocket so sometimes having a short pocket depths are really good yes you're going to have root exposure yes you know you might get some sensitivity but at least your, your area the area will stay clean because you have a deep uh, not a deep pocket you have a shallow pocket or sorry not even a pocket you just have like a three millimeter probing depth which is considered healthy so Flap for access. This is when you're um, providing access to tooth roots. It's also called the Whitman flap surgery. So again, you cut, you elevate, you debride. So flap for access, you're debriding, and then you put it back and you suture it. And here they did not displace the flap. So there's something called displaced flap where it goes lower. This is non-displaced flap where the where these gum is put back in its original position. So this is flap for access. They elevate the gums. We can see the tooth and we're going to debride that area and we can see the bone and then we're just going to suture it back or the periodontist rather is going to suture it back. And the reason for this as I was saying is if you have pockets that are deeper than six millimeter it is really really hard to debride that area. So when you do a flap for access surgery you can get in there and debride um the area that a periodontist can do the surgery and then you or the periodontist can get in there and debride the calculus out open flap debridement so open flap debridement is very similar to the flap axis that we just looked at except it's a more extensive um, flap elevation so when you look at it let's look at this it's more expensive uh, extensive so you're making incisions all along here you're making incisions then you're opening it up <clears throat> and it's a full thickness flap so there's lots of things that you're opening up like a lot of tissues that you're opening up and then you're debriding the area and then you can have displaced flap versus non-displaced flap so displaced flap is when you put it 
lower and non-displaced flap is when you suture the gum in its original position. Osseous resective surgery. So this is osseous means bone. So when this is bone resective surgery. And so anytime you're correcting bone deformities, it's an osseous resective surgery. So this is what a normal bone looks like. This is what disease bone looks like. It is really hard to control um, the periodontitis when your bone looks like this, when it's very irregular. So what they would do is they would smoothen out this area. When you do the surgery, you would smoothen out this area. And when you do that, it um, decreases the chance of your periodontitis to get worse. So there's something called a sectomy and osteoplasty. So a sectomy is more aggressive because you're removing the alveolar bone, whereas osteoplasty, you're just reshaping it. We're not really removing any bone. So a sectomy, you're, you can see here, the bone has been removed completely. That's a sectomy, whereas osteoplasty, you're just reshaping the contour of the bone, not really doing any bone removal. Apically positioned flap with osseous resective surgery. Okay, so look what's happening here. Apically positioned, the gums have been positioned apically. Do you see that? The gums have gone up. And now we're getting increased root exposure. Now, but the, the, the advantage here is that you're getting reduced pocket depth. So sometimes if people have very deep pockets and they can't keep it clean, maybe this is the best option so that we can keep it clean. There, it's easy for them to keep it clean. There is an increased root exposure, which means that now if they have, a, um, they will actually need to be very mindful of their oral hygiene because we don't want any root caries. And one thing you know is that when you're not mindful of your oral hygiene, root caries are more likely to happen on the root because it's softer than on the enamel. So we need to make sure that they have good oral self-care and they come see us every three months. This is an example. They've been sutured back, and but the gums have been placed apically. So this is an apically positioned flap. When this happens, they would um, put a periodontal dressing in those areas to let it heal and so that it doesn't bother you as much. So it's also known as pocket reduction. And what they've done here is they have, um, if the pockets were too deep, they'll take the gum, they'll smoothen out the bone and they'll um, take the gum and put it further down so that the pockets now are shorter. So here you could have like a five millimeter pocket and now after the surgery you only have a two or three millimeter probing depth. So it is easily maintainable. Let's look at bone replacement graft. So sometimes when you need bone and you could need bone because you want to put an implant, um, that's, a, that's a very common one. So when you're getting bone grafts, it's really important that actually let me just show you pictures first so here's a radiograph you can see there's no bone over here this person got bone grafting done and look at that voila all the bone is back because they got bone grafting done and so where can they find bone well there's many different areas you can get bone or bone replacement grafts you could do an autograft where you take bone from your own body so your hip you could do an allograft where you take bone from another human so um, it could be a donor it could be a cadaver so it could be someone that has passed away and they're giving you their bone it could be a xenograft which is from an animal like a cow or it could be an alloplast which is like not actual bone but it's in materials that look like bone non-bone graft material so these are there's many different ways on where you can find um, graft bone bone for grafting now, if you see someone, a client who had bone replacement grafting done, do not probe until the periodontist tells you it's okay. Really, it shouldn't be disturbed for several months. And it's really important to keep that area clean because you don't, they paid so much money for this. It's very easy for it to fail, especially if it's exposed to a lot of bacteria. So we don't want, you know, we want to make sure it's as clean as possible. Guided tissue regeneration. So sometimes what happens is when you're, um, looking at what heals first the first thing that heals are your gingival epithelial cells are, are your gums that heals first and then everything else heals after everything else is secondary so sometimes what we want is we want a membrane put in here so that everything here can heal first before the gums because sometimes they're saying you know what we really need everything on the inside to heal first before the gums come and close that area 
the epithelial um, gums heal fast, but the inside one are a lot more slower growing. And therefore, if we put a barrier, it will allow it to do its job before the gums heal. So you want to delay the, in the growth of the epithelium so that all these other cells can uh, take over and populate that area. So this is the, uh, the barrier membrane so that it allows this part to do its job. And then once um, it's done here, you can either remove it or some of them can get you know resorbed. So it depends on the barrier membrane. So how does it work? Well, what they do is they open up the flap, then they'll debride that area, and then they'll put the barrier membrane. This is what it looks like over here, a barrier membrane that they have put in that area that's covering the gum, and then they'll switch it right up. And when you look at the barrier material, some of them require removal where they have to come back and remove it. Um, but other barrier materials are resorbable and they don't require removal. Something we should know is we should not probe these areas for several months after surgery. So always follow the instructions the periodontist gives you. All right, free gingival graft. So let me show you what a free gingival graft actually looks like. This is what it looks like. It may look really ugly to you, but this is actually pretty good. This is a free gingival graft. And what they have done here is let's see if I can they have cut open vertical incisions they cut open the gums and they take a patch of gums from uh, a patch of your epithelial of tissue from your palate okay they take it from your palate typically and they put it in like this and then they suture it and so here we can see free gingival grafting right here Sorry, we can't. I'm like, well, where am I? Where is it? We can't. I see recession here, and I'm trying to find it because free gingival grafting, you you would see it right away. Okay, so here's the recession. Okay, you can see the recession. They've opened up the gums. They're taking a patch from the palate and they're putting it in that area where the recession was. This is what it looks like after a few, you know, after I think a, a week or two. It's healing here. And you can see, okay, now you can see it, right? The recession is gone. Does this look aesthetically pleasing to you? So this is the before and after. Recession, no recession. I mean, this person, obviously, this periodontist did a good job. But you can, if you look really closely, you can actually tell something was placed there. You can tell grafting was done. And this is free gingival grafting, where they take it from the palate and they put it here. But it's not aesthetically pleasing because you can actually see the grafts. They don't look as nice. When I show you the other type of grafting, which is the connective tissue grafting. So actually, this, before I do that, the color match at donor site is not ideal. So when we looked at the recession area and we looked at the before and after, the color wasn't exactly the greatest. Um, another one though, connective tissue graft, with that you're going to see a huge difference. It's actually going to look aesthetically pleasing. So with the connective tissue graft, what they do it's just again here there's recession over here they're putting a graft and look at how nice it looks you can't even tell that a graft was really placed because it's so aesthetically pleasing here's another example recession is over here look at that severe recession inadequate attached gingiva goes straight to the, the alveolar mucosa so what the periodontist did was they did a connective tissue graft and with the connective tissue graft, look at how nicely it heals up. You can't even tell that a graft was done if you look at the tissue color here. So with the connective tissue graft, excellent tissue match was obtained. Now, what is the difference between a free gingival graft and a connective tissue graft? Well, the difference is with the free gingival graft, they just took the outside layer here and put it on. But with the connective tissue graft, they go deeper in and they get the connective tissue out. Because remember, this pink part that we're seeing is your epithelial tissue. On the inside is your connective tissue where the blood supply is. If they take the connective tissue and they put it in that area, you're going to get better results. I mean, it might be more painful, but you'll get better results. It'll look aesthetically pleasing, like this one here. It looks nice. So with connective tissue grafting, you're going to get excellent tissue color match. And with both free gingival and connective tissue, the recession area will be um, covered.
type of surgery that we'll look at is crown lengthening. And crown lengthening is a surgery that creates a crown, that makes the crown, the clinical crown, a little longer. Now, why would someone want that? Well, let's look at this option. I'm going to adjust the, um, the screen on my end. Okay, here we go. So the reason why someone would want connective tissue crafting is let's say they have a decay. Let's say they have a cavity and it's under the gum line. Well, how do you treat that? How do you try treat a decay under the gum line? Kind of impossible, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to do go to the periodontist and get crown lengthening done where they open up the gum and they now you can see the decay and then they would uh, restore that decay. A small amount of bone may need to be trimmed in that area very painless and then the gums are sutured back but the only dis thing is it's sutured back apically so that we can see the decay sorry sorry i'm so sorry the decay is restored after okay so right now what they're doing is they're taking the gum and they're placing it apically so that the decay is exposed and then the teeth can be repaired by your dentist Okay, so the periodontist does this so that the teeth can be repaired by the dentist. Another reason why someone can do crown lengthening is because perhaps there's a fracture that goes all the way down. So your teeth are fractured and how do you replace that? How do you put a crown there? Well, you got to do crown lengthening so that we can access the fracture because the fracture might be covered by the gum. So we bring the, or the periodontist brings the gums down. Once it has healed, the prep could be done for a crown. Another reason why aesthetic this is an aesthetic crown lengthening is you see how they have a lots of gummy this is a gummy smile you can see excess gums so they'll remove the excess gums so the crown looks lengthened the crown looks bigger and so that's the before and that's the after quite a huge difference so with crown lengthening you might experience some sensitivity the patients might experience some sensitivity and so it's really important that we teach them how to properly do oral self care Gingivectomy. Gingivectomy is literally surgically removing the, the gingival tissue like this. Where the periodontist is surgically removing that tissue. That's a gingivectomy where the gums have been surgically removed. All right. Hope that helps.